believe it or not, it is somewhat of a feat to get my name right. I've been I've been called Chris Slivers, Chris Silver, all my life. So um, thanks for getting that right. All right, cool. So uh, some shameless plugs that you'll see later as well, but I throw them up there because my boss pays for me to be here. Um, the actual title of this talk, by the way, is called Go With the Flow, and the subtitle was, is Strategies for Successful Social Engineering. So you'll see why I named it Go With the Flow in just a little bit. Uh, first of all, for those I have not had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Chris Silvers. My day job is uh, I work for Foundstone. I do pen testing. Uh, I'm also the practice lead for our social engineering practice, which has kind of led me to uh, more research and, and interest in this area. Uh, in my spare time, I love to fish. Uh, I, I love to speak publicly. Um, I consider if, if I'm talking to more than three people, that's public speaking. So I get credit for that. Um, I also mentor young people. So like tonight at the after party, if you're into that kind of thing of, of yeah. I'm trying to keep it clean here. <laughs> Mentoring. I used to say messing with, and that didn't really, yeah. Mentoring young minds, okay, people. Jeez, wow, okay, anyway. I didn't realize that was so funny, but anyway, whatever. I, I, I'm all about that. It's one of the things that, like, if you look at some of the, uh, the, the security leaders of today, the, you know, the Moxie Marlin Spikes, and the, the guys who are doing, like, the really cool research, um, if, you, if you get an opportunity to talk to these guys, uh, in a lot of cases you'll find that when they were teenagers, they were hacking into stuff, they were you know, dialing up BBS and, and, and all that stuff, and imagine had they gotten caught and arrested and you know, turned to a life of crime, and we would never get to benefit from a lot of the research that they've done. So, um, so it's kind of a, a, an issue close to my heart that, uh, that there are still kids out there that are that bright. They're just waiting for somebody to mentor them and keep them out of trouble long enough so that they can get into the professional world and do great stuff for our industry. So anyway, uh, but moving on, I've been in this industry for a long time. Uh, before I got into this industry, I actually worked in the janitorial business. So uh, it kind of proves that, that uh, even if you've had a previous career, you can get into security. Uh, it's not too late to, to get into the security industry. Um, because things are changing so fast that you know we're still all learning a lot, so it's kind of cool. Um, probably what I'm best known for uh, to people who know me uh, is in the security anyway. Was uh, in 2011 I competed in the uh, DEFCON 19 Social Engineering Capture the Flag contest. Really cool contest, a lot of fun. Uh, I came in second place, so. Uh, which, which was convenient. Uh, this year I competed again, but I decided to go with a little different technique and just have some fun. Um, and I still place fourth. <laughs> so, go figure, right? Sometimes you get lucky. All right. But realistically, <clears throat> I'm really just an old country boy from a little town in North Georgia called Kennesaw. All right. All right. Wonderful. And by applause, who knows about Kennesaw, Georgia? Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. I thought I was going to just have one, and that would be funny, but... Okay, so we got like five people, right? So what is known about Kennesaw, Georgia? Gun ownership, the gun law, 1982. I didn't realize it had been that long. So, so what is that, like, I don't know, whatever. 1982, I was 16 at the time. Do the math, right? Um, this guy named Dent Myers... His uh, nickname is Wild Man, as you can see, and he runs the Civil War Surplus and Herb Shop in downtown Kennesaw. Yeah, yeah. He sponsored this bill that said that anybody who lives in the city limits of Kennesaw must own a gun. Right? How crazy is that, right? So, um, so you saw before, yes, I do technical pen testing and all that stuff, but when it really comes down to it, I'm just an old country boy from Kennesaw, Georgia. Uh, I have leveraged this really to the T, and I highly recommend leveraging 
whatever characteristics you have or whatever you were born with into a career. If you can do that and, and you know, pair it with what you love, then you're a lucky person and you'll live the life like I do because I love it. I absolutely love it. So, um, so this is essentially what we're going to uh, cover today, hopefully, uh, as long as we don't run out of time and I, and I can avoid rambling on. Uh, I want to give you a little bit of background how I kind of created this presentation. Um, and then we're going to dissect a social engineering phone call. So this is about social engineering, but it's really honed in on telephone-based phishing. Uh, some people call it vishing. I don't really buy that too much, but it's telephone-based social engineering. Okay. By the way, can you guys hear me okay in the back? Yeah? Okay, cool. All right. Um, we're going to dissect a social engineering call into different phases, right? Um, and I'm going to give you an example of a call. Now, keep in mind these calls done right, and you'll see, you'll see the, the pretext in a second. Done right, they take anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. I'm not going to play an entire call for you because that would take up all the time. I'm going to give you some snippets, but, um, but I think you'll get the point of it. So we'll, we'll go through a, a good call, and then we'll talk about different things that could go wrong at different phases of the call. And, and play you some recorded uh, examples of those. Uh, then we'll do something I like to call quiz time, and so uh, we'll see how that goes. I haven't tried that yet. Uh, and then possibly some, some call bloopers if we still have time. All right, so as I said, 2011, I participated in the social engineering capture the flag, so just over a year ago. And after the competition, I really had a good time and, and met Chris Hadnagy. He's a great guy. Uh, you know, if you get the opportunity to meet him, take it because he's a great guy, great to talk with. And we got to talking about the fact that when he does his social engineering phone calls, he records all the phone calls. Well, I've always been a little shy about that. You know, Georgia is a one party state, but I, I know Nevada is a two party state, so you have to have two-party consent to record the phone calls. But what he was explaining to me was, well, that's true from a person-to-person -person call, from a, you know, if you're calling a consumer. But if you're calling a business, you, you actually only have to have the permission of the company that, you know, the business that owns the phone. In other words, your client. You don't have to have each person's individual uh, permission to record the call. Now, I'm not a lawyer. And if there's a lawyer in the audience that wants to refute that, feel free. Um, but I did talk to the EFF lawyers about it because I didn't believe him when he said that. And they said, yeah, that's right. I was like, okay, well, it's, <laughs> it's worth a shot. Um, so every contract since that, um, I have, you know, during our little kickoff call, I talk to the client and I tell them that, you know, we can record the calls for you and we'll give you the recordings. So when you go back to your employees and you're trying to explain to them how someone scammed you, you can actually play them the recordings of the phone calls and, you know, it'll help educate your employees. So I thought, oh, that's a great idea. Well, so a couple things started happening. As I started recording calls and then um, going back and listening to the recordings, I started noticing where my mistakes were. Right, because you, you hang up the phone and you think back to that call and you think, gosh, you know, why didn't I get that person's password or why did I get that person's password? Or, you know, you start trying to remember and, you know, you don't really pick things up. You start listening to the recording of the call and all of a sudden, all the little intonations of the other person's voice and all the ums and errs that you said that you didn't realize you said come through on the recording when you're listening to it and you realize, well, gee, it's starting to make sense as to how this works and why I was successful or why I was unsuccessful, right? So, um, so that started happening, and then we started getting, uh, you know, at Foundstone, we started getting more social engineering gigs, especially telephone-based, and uh, there were times when I wasn't able to, to do the work, so we had to have other consultants do it, and a lot of them were really not very comfortable. I mean, is there anybody in here who does telephone-based social engineering? Okay, so, so you know it's a little stressful, right? Yeah, all right. Who in here has ever done telemarketing? 
Okay, a couple. That's pretty much what it's like. You don't still do telemarketing, do you? That's why. <laughs> right? It's not fun <laughs> at all. Right? That's sort of what this is like. It's that stressful. And, and a lot of us, most of us in the room are not all that sociable to begin with. So, you know, it stands to reason. So, so anyway, so I started using these recordings to train other consultants. Just to give them an example, you know, here's, here's a good call and what it sounds like. Here's a bad call and what it sounds like, right? Um, well, then time goes on. I end up recording over 100 phone calls in this past year, right? Um, and I was sitting around one day and I was, I was you know, put, I was looking for some recordings to help another consultant. And I started actually seeing some patterns uh, develop within the calls that I was making as I was listening to them, right? And that's kind of where I came up with these sections of the call, the greeting portion, the building of the trust, the identifying the problem, and then the going for the goal. And, it, and it's basically built off this particular pretext. Now, this is a pretty common pretext. It, it's very effective. I noticed it in the social engineering capture flag contest. And essentially, it's basically you pretend to be a help desk person. You call a typical user. You describe something in their environment that has changed, okay? Whether it's specific or general, whatever. You describe something that has changed, and that's why you're calling. And that hopefully builds up your authority and, you know, your knowledge and your trust. And then at some point during the conversation, you, you're asking the, the user to check on something, and there's a problem. There's something that, that they tell you uh, is X, and you say, oh, well, that should be Y. It doesn't really matter what. Um, you know, there's different theories on, on how technical it should be, but at some point, there will be a problem, right? And so then you move to the, the, tr the troubleshooting stage where you're, you're trying to determine why it is that their system is not configured correctly, right? And that's where it really starts getting as technical as you can. And at some point, now whether you force this or, or it's prompted by the user, which is my, my preference, uh, at some point, somebody's going to get impatient. And you're going to offer a better solution of how you can fix their problem. Because now that you convince them that they have a problem that you're here to fix, right? You're the nice guy coming in and fixing it. then then you're going to use some, you know, portal that, you know, support portal, you'll hear that a lot in the calls, uh, to remotely fix their problem so that you don't have to, you're not wasting any more of their time, right? And once they start feeling like, uh, I'm getting tired of this phone call, that's when you're ready to, to, to go in for that. And then, of course, whatever portal you're going into, uh, you can't log into it because of there's some kind of password issue where they need to change their password, right? Um, we do have consultants who actually ask people um, for their password. I'm just not a big fan of that because I just don't think it's realistic. I think if I were an attacker and I could just get the user to change their password to a value that I give them, what, that's going to work so much easier and more consistently than asking them for their password, then I might as well just do that, right? Um, and you'll see sometimes that you end up getting the password anyway. So, um, and if you go through all this troubleshooting pretext and you don't get to the point where you feel comfortable even asking them to change the password or whatever, you still get a lot of information out of them as well that you can use on the next call to, to make it sound like you know a whole lot. Right? So it's kind of a, 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 another way to do kind of reconnaissance, extra reconnaissance on them. Right? Okay, so putting it visually, and this is why the talk was called Go With The Flow, uh, because I created a little flow chart. As you can see, it's a very simple flow chart, um, which I'm sure could be expanded, and you know, feel free if you, if you have ideas. I would love to hear them. But essentially, it goes through these four phases of, you know, the greeting and, you know, did I get a good response? Did the person, for example, did the person when they answered, did they say their name? Because some people just say hello and then some people say, hi, this is Jamie, right? 
Um, you know, when I, when I introduced myself, did they pause? When I said, hi, this is Chris with the help desk, did they go, uh, okay? You know, are they acting suspicious just right from the get-go, right? Um, and of course, you know, if you get a bad response, you, you exit the call. Now, if you notice, it's got one box up here to exit the call, but that doesn't mean that you use the same technique to exit the call. If it's during the greeting, for example, you might say, I'm sorry, I was trying to get in touch with Jamie Fuentes. This is Jamie Johnson. I must have the wrong number. I'll call somebody else, right? If you're way down here in ready to go for the gold, and they say, well, I'm not comfortable doing whatever it is you're asking me to do, then you make up some other exit. But the key here is to develop um, at least one exit uh, technique for each one of these phases so that you don't get caught off guard. You know, you kinda, it, it's kind of a little give and take, and you're, you're listening for, them, for the response and trying to judge whether it's positive or negative. If it's negative, you go into your exit script. If it's positive, you move on to the next phase, right? Make perfect sense, right? Sounds easy. Okay, so let's hear an example, hopefully, okay. of when it goes well. Hi, is uh, Peter in? He is actually on vacation at the moment. Can I ask who's calling? Okay, I, this is Chris with the help desk. Um, okay. Liz? This is Olivia. Olivia? Hi, Olivia. Um, hi, Chris. Hi, how are you this morning? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Sorry, I, things are going a little nuts over here at the help desk, but... Um, I, I was wondering, the reason for my call, Olivia, um, are you aware of the uh, accounting, accounting system upgrade? I am aware of the accounting system upgrade. Okay, good, good. So um, I was calling to make sure that um, everything happened over, over the last few weeks about the, um, about the upgrade. Y'all hear that? Um, and we pushed an update last night, and I wanted to make sure that everything was working okay. Your, um, you, you mean know? in terms of the new booking slips? Excuse me? You mean in terms of the new booking slips? New yes. booking slips. Um, the only problem that I've run into is that after I, after I submit them, like complete and submit them, my copy hasn't been popping up to print out for my records. Okay. Yeah. Let me, let me get it's that. It's a gift. She, she's given me this stuff. Yeah. Sweet. I don't even okay. have to convince and, her. And which, which interface are you using for that? Is that the web-based interface or the... Yeah, that would be the Internet Explorer. Okay. So I know that I called and um, had somebody help me one time to retrieve it just because I like to print a copy for my own records. But um, what had happened was I submitted it, and I think the pop-up blocker blocked it from popping up to allow right. me to print it. Yeah, that, that's what I was thinking was probably... Uh, the Is that issue. what's been happening with a bunch of people? I think, I think that's what... Okay. Um, I tell you what, we can, um, we can take a look at that. Um, do you know what version of Internet Explorer you're using? Let me see. I think it's just the same that everybody else is using. Um, this is one of my favorites. So. Sorry, I don't know exactly what version it would be. Okay. I'm not super computer savvy. Yeah. Um, that's quite all right. That's quite all right. <laughs> um, that's what we're here for, right? Awesome. That's awesome. what we're here for, ma'am. Yeah, if you just, do you have Internet Explorer up right now? I do. Okay. If you just look in the, um, here, let me, let, me, um, let me bring it up as well. Um, Okay. So y'all hear all the if typing in the, in the background? Right I'm just typing random shit. Of the screen, you should see a little question mark. So just under that, you should see something that says DNS servers. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So I've skipped and, a lot of space uh, in the troubleshooting. How many numbers are there? Okay. Is we're now getting, one? we're digging in. No, it numbers, says right. one zero period one period okay. one one. Okay. And then yeah. there's another one right below it that says one zero period one period two two. Okay, two two. Yeah. Okay. Um, and do you see one that says 11, period 2, period 2, period 1? Y'all recognize um, that? No, IP I do not. Space? Mm, 11 okay. dot 2 dot 2. Okay. Could that be the problem? Yeah, that, that may be part of the problem. Yeah. Let That's me, DOD um, IP let me, let's space. Try so one. I, I really appreciate your, your help, Olivia. Yeah, sure. This just um, seems so complicated when all I thought it would require is like a no more pop up blocker. <laughs> But yeah. if you think that this is helping, okay. then okay. Yeah. Remember, the call's been going for like 20 okay. minutes, right? Let yeah. me get you to run this command. Um, it's, uh, 
basically it's just it's two words jammed together. It's system info. A couple other things. <laughs> and I'm sorry to yeah. take up all your time, Olivia, and I appreciate um, you doing that. Um, one thing I can do is uh, is look at this. Um, we have this uh, support portal. Mm -hmm. So so just for system management, um, and it's kind of in a pilot phase. So what I can do is just log into your computer remotely and pull all the rest of the information and then troubleshoot it. So, um, okay. Sure, whatever you need to do. I my only thing was that I just didn't want any like I didn't want the pop up locker to run anymore. But whatever you think you need to do, I yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let me let me log into the portal real quick. Okay. Your let's see your host name was D T and log in. By the way, I'm I'm like sitting in my pajamas at home doing this, right? So yeah, that's what the typing noises make it sound like an um, office. So. Know. Uh, Olivia, well, I'm having some trouble logging in there. Is um, when was the last time you uh, happened to change your password? Um, uh, pretty recently. Yeah. Okay. Because I, with this new system, if um, if your password expires, which it, it doesn't really tell you. Okay. If your password expires, you end up having to change it before you can actually log into it. So. Um, I tell you what, do you know how to change your password? I do. Can I just give you my password? Um, sure. sure. Okay. <laughs> Ready for it? Yep. It's Z E R O. All right, I think I blanked out the last the rest of the password. But you but you get the point, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh you know, <laughs> We, we make fun, we laugh, but it's, it's pretty common, okay? It's that, you know, once, and, and really this particular call was, was a particularly good one. And, that, and by the way, that's one reason I put that, you know, that, uh, I don't know if y'all recognize that picture from, uh, uh, what was it, Pillow Talk, the movie Pillow Talk with Doris Day and Rock Hudson? Anybody old enough for that? Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wasn't there at the screening of the movie, but, you know. Uh, but anyway, so, so why did that call work so well? Okay, F from, the, from the very get-go, she, she asked me how I was doing, right? And it gave me the opportunity to say, well, things are kind of crazy. So I, I ga garnered a little sympathy there. You know, sympathy goes so far in social engineering. It's amazing. So, to me, it's more powerful than the whole you know, uh, fake, authoritative kind of, hey, this is the CFO, blah, blah, blah. To me, sympathy is more powerful. And mostly because I think it, it, it gives people a good feeling when they help you. Instead of being afraid to not help you, they feel they want to help you. So it makes them feel good about it, right? Um, you know, she, when we started talking about the application, I knew a little bit about their accounting system of course, I didn't know about the booking slips, which worked really well. And of course, you know, she's feeding me the information and I'm just kind of confirming it and confirming it for her to make her feel, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about, right? A lot of times people just give you the answers. All you have to do is agree with them, right? If you give them the opportunity. Um, the, the problem here, yeah, she gave me a freebie because there was an actual problem. But it's amazing how many times you call a Windows user and you ask them if they're having a problem. Many times they, yeah, yeah, I've, I've had a problem. I've been meaning, I've either been meaning to call the help desk or I called the help desk. We'll, we'll hear a, a, a um, well, no, actually, I don't, I'm not playing this one, but an, another call I was on, um, one lady said, I'm not having a problem, but this other lady's having a problem. And she actually transferred me to the other lady and she gave me the help desk ticket number and told me who she talked to. And I said, yeah, 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 actually, I just talked to him, and that's why I'm calling. You know, I said, yeah. Sometimes you just get gifts like that, right? Um, you know, making the user feel good about, about not knowing about computers, all right? Avoiding making them feel dumb is good, right? You know, I'm sure she, this lady was very knowledgeable in something, right, for the business. She didn't know a lot about computers, but that's okay. I probably don't know Jack about what she does. 
So if I make her feel okay about that, that, oh, I'm just a computer geek and, you know, that's all I really know, she'll feel good about giving me all this information and she'll feel okay that she's not familiar with it, right? Um, and, of course, you have to be ready to explain anything in plain English uh, when, you know, when you get prompted. So if a user says, well, what does this all mean? What is DNS? Well, be able to explain to them, you know, it's like a phone book, right? That, that your computer looks up when you type google.com and it translates to these things called IP address. Be all good and patient with them. Because the whole point here is, is for her to get impatient, not me to get impatient. It's almost like a negotiation. The first person who gets impatient loses, right? Because I got all day, you know? I mean, this is my job, right? So it's no big deal. I got nothing better to do. And it's kind of fun, too. Um, and then, of course, and then, of course, being, you know, gracious when, when the, the victim does give you information and gracious that they're spending the time with you, right? Making them feel bad is not, definitely not going to help you. Okay, so that's a good call. All right, so let's see what happens when some things go, go a little awry. This is Amanda. Hi, Amanda. This is Vernon with the IT Help Desk. How are you this morning? I'm okay. How are you? Okay, good. Good. Uh, Amanda, the reason for my call uh, is, are you aware of the upgrade that we're doing to Outlook? No. No? Yeah. <laughs> um, we just recently pushed out an upgrade to Outlook, and uh, some of the users are having some issues with it, like Outlook crashing. Um, have, you, have you had any issues this morning? or? <clears throat> I'm sorry, this is Vernon? Yes, Vernon. Okay. Has, has your like system Vernon. been? I'm sorry. This doesn't sound like Vernon. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Oops. My my system's okay. Okay. All right. Well, like, like I said, we were just calling, uh, just making sure that everybody's system was okay. We had some users that uh, their Outlook was crashing a couple times yesterday. Nope, not mine. Okay. Well, if you have any issues, please do call the help desk and let us know. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right. So that was about as eloquent and non-threatening an exit I could think of at the time, right? I'm sure when you hear the recording, you think, maybe I, maybe I should have just hung up the phone. <laughs> just click, right? I hate to do that. I've done it before, and I hate to do that because it kind of makes the user a little bit even more suspicious, right? I mean, obviously, I'm busted. And I go through this, this process. Uh, if you noticed, the first call that I, that I played for you, I used my name, Chris. Now, she never asked me my last name. Um, I'm pretty sure on that engagement, I, I didn't know a person named Chris in IT. So I probably would have said Silvers if she'd asked me my last name. Um, but you know, it, it's always kind of a, a balancing act whether to spoof an actual employee or not, right? Um, you'll see some of these calls, I, if you do it right and you've done enough reconnaissance um, to know, to kind of get an idea of who knows who in the organization, then spoofing a name is perfect. But like in that case, if you didn't do enough and you didn't realize that the person you were calling might be sitting right next to the person you're faking to be, I've had that happen. Uh, the, the lady said, no, this is not Johnny. I'm sitting next to Johnny, and he's not on the phone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that was, that was the one time when I just clicked. I, I got nothing, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Um, but the thing is, I've had it actually work really well for me one time, and that's why I put down here Professor Corn Blossom. Because I, I was doing reconnaissance, and this was obviously a, a university that I was calling on, and um, now the, the scenario was a little flipped. I was pretending to be a user and I was calling the help desk. And I was basically trying to get them to go out to a website, you know, credential harvesting kind of thing. Um, and I wanted to pretend to be one of the professors. Well, when I looked at the, the faculty list and I, went, and I was going down through and I was thinking, well, you know, who can I spoof? Well, this university was up north and obviously, I have a bit of trouble talking like I'm from anywhere but Atlanta, Georgia. 
So um, I had to find a professor who maybe was from the South. Took a little digging. I found this guy. Um, he, he was, his last name was Corn Blossom, believe it or not. So I call, and I get the guy on the phone, and he's like, uh, yeah, can I help you? And I said, oh, this is Professor Corn Blossom. I'm having some trouble, blah, blah, blah. And the guy paused, and he went, really? And I thought, oh, this is going to be sweet. I said, really what? He said, your name is really Professor Corn Blossom? I paused a little bit. I said, look it up. All of a sudden, I hear, tap, 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 tap. I'm sorry, professor. How can I help you? <laughs> I'm like, dude, don't try to scam a scammer, all right? <laughs> Give me a little credit, all right? So, yeah, so that call ended up just going great. I mean, I got all kind of shit. In fact, he was the guy that, that uh, once he logged into the site, I had him taking his, his phone, going over to other people and having them log into the site as well, right? So, yeah, it was like a threefer. It was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, sweet, I'm taking off early today. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's hear another example here. Okay, can you, can you tell me your name again? My name? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Wade s That's uh, S Okay, who do you work for? For IT. All right, and who's your boss? I'm sorry, say that again. Who's your Who's your boss? My boss is Gary. You can hear my stall. Who's his boss? Can't you? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm right. trying to get to a name that I recognize. Oh well, I, I mean, I, I work up here in um, St. Paul. Uh huh. You're familiar. I, with I the worked team? up. I worked, I worked up there in St. Paul for six months as well, so. Oh, joy. I know some folks up there. Okay, so you probably know Gary. He's been there forever, right? No, I, I don't know Gary. Okay, I'm trying to think of who uh, who Gary reports to. How about David? Uh, is that his last name? I know Dave. Okay, there you go. Who's the head of IT up there? Well, I mean, Dave's the manager. I'm not sure who is like the, you talking about the director or something? Sure. I just uh, want to make sure this isn't some sort of a phishing attempt or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, you know, I'm just like an IT grunt, man. I, you know, they don't, uh, <laughs> I mean, they, they don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't get invited to all like the board meetings or anything. So. <laughs> Neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This guy's tough, man. <laughs> yeah. So, so I mean, I, there's um, uh, Ron. Right. Do you know him? Yeah, He's like the security guy. Is this painful enough? Yeah, Ron's the, the point? security. Okay, good. <laughs> I'll tell you, it was painful when I did it. It's painful listening to it, right? Because I'm just trying to backpedal. I'm just like, I, somehow I got to get out of this call, right? So, um, you know, and, and actually, with my stall techniques, I had an org chart, or I, at least I had a, a, an employee list, and I was feverishly trying to find it and just trying to find names and crap. I mean, it's like, geez, Louise. So, um, so, so this goes to building trust. I mean, you know, when the guy answered the phone, he was nice enough. But when I started telling him what I needed, all of a sudden, he just turned into this, you know, interrogator, right? Um, as far as who I knew and who I was and, you know, like, like you heard, you know, is this a phishing attempt, right? So, um, so sometimes, you know, there's just no shortcut for thorough reconnaissance, right? You, you really have to know what you're doing, right? So, by the way, just a, a quick side note um, for the parent company, McAfee. Y'all know, y'all know W is talking at Focus, right? Yeah, okay. That was supposed to be funny. This is Stephanie. How can I help you? Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Hey, um, Stephanie, are, are you aware of the success factors upgrade that we've been pushing out? This is Brad from IT in the Inglewood office. Um, some of our users are reporting problems, and I was just wondering if you were having any. Um, for which system? Uh, for su success factors? Are, are you a success factors user? You know what? I don't... 
think I we are. Okay. Um, maybe right. let me transfer you over to sales. I do believe they use that system. Would you like me to transfer you over? Sure. Yeah. Great. That'd, okay, be, that'd great. be awesome. Just, just a moment. So, so in most situations, getting transferred is a bad thing. By the way, sometimes it works out okay, especially if there's a if you prompt it. If you say, "Oh, everything's fine with you," could you transfer me? Or if they say, "Oh, well, somebody else has a problem," those kind of things. In most cases, though transfers are not good because you're not ready for that new target. You've done your recon on the target you're calling, you know about them, you have no clue about who you're about to talk to. So the, the lesson here really is in the building trust phase when you're talking about the, their application that got upgraded, blah, 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 you need to know that environment. And if you catch one that it's just not um, applicable them, to them, then you're stuck. And there again, you sort of get into that balancing act between talking about some general piece of application that they use, like Outlook or Internet Explorer, versus something specific, like you know maybe they call something CopNet or something like that, right? And then the more specific usually works out better, but you never you never can tell. All right. So the last one, the last kind of one um, that I went tell you wrong. What, if you have a few minutes, let's uh, let's check your your service pack level. So this is late. I'm actually call. about to go into a meeting here at nine o'clock. Is there a way we can do this a different time? Um, I, actually, I can try to um, go in through our new remote portal. Uh, let me let me see here. What do you know? How, do you happen to know your workstation name, Christy? No, I don't. Okay. Let, let me see if I can find it with your login ID. Let's see. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting access denied. Uh, when was the last time you changed your password? Has it been a little while? Yep. Yep. Okay. That, that's probably the problem. So I tell you what, real quick, let me walk you through um, change your password real quick, and then um, I can get in remotely and and you can get to your meeting. So if you just do well, a... Well, we uh, need to, I, I'm a little leery of all this at this point. <laughs> Is okay. there a way that if you're here on site, you can come to my office and we can work through it? Um, yeah, I can. I can probably come by later today. Okay. Uh, are you available? Maybe uh, yeah. later this afternoon, three, four o'clock. Yeah. Sure. So fortunately, she gave me an exit. Right. Oh yeah, I'll be there sometime. You just wait. Right. Um, but you could kind of tell when she was already starting to get a little suspicious. Right. And a, and a lot of it is just I got impatient. Right? I got impatient with her. What I should have done at some point was just kind of cut my losses. Right? When I started sensing her getting a little suspicious, I should have said, okay, well, um, I understand you got to go to a meeting. I'll, you know, I'll either give you a call back or you know, we'll work it out. Right? And just kind of left it there. But you know, being me, I, I have a tendency to push sometimes. It gets me in trouble. Okay, so um, all right, so here's a little experiment. And um, I'm not sure how exactly this is going to go, but uh, if, if everyone's been awake and paying attention, we'll, we'll see how this happens. So what I want to do is I want to play a clip of uh, kind of early in a social engineering call, and then we're going to see by, by applause whether you think the call ended up going well or not so well from the perspective of the tester, okay? <laughs> right? So in other words, did I... You know, did I come out, uh, I don't remember what the first one is, but anyway, uh, was I successful or was I unsuccessful? Yeah. Was I leap or did I get Start. beat? Okay. Mm -hmm. And then click on that run, and then that brings up a little window uh, that has like this little white area in there. In the white area, type in these three letters, C, M, D, like Charlie, Mary, David. Charlie, Mary, and what? David, like CMD. Oh, okay. Right. And then click on OK. Okay, I think that's okay, that why don't you guys, why, why wouldn't you normally uh, get access to my computer to do this? Do I do? Well, I, actually, I can, Carolyn. Um, well, actually, let me, let me see if I can do that with the... Uh, remote portal real quick. 
Um, yeah, I, you're right. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let me, um, hold on just a second here. LAX D0 Okay, I think that's it. So, uh, was it successful? By a clap? No, by, oh, wow. Okay. Obviously, I was not successful, was I? Go ahead. Clap if you think I was not successful. Wonderful. Yes. It was a beat. It may down. be because your, your password is stale. Um, I tell you what, if you don't mind, let's go ahead and change your password real quick. Yeah, I'm going to pass on this. Uh, pass on this. Yeah, yeah. This, this okay. is well, I'll tell you what. Let me, a lot of it was that pause. Monica. Hi, Monica. This is Chris Hi. with the Help Desk. How are you? Hi. Good. How are you? Good, good. Um, listen, uh, I'm assuming you're aware of all the uh, accounting system upgrade that we yes. did recently? Yes, I am. Okay, good. Uh, were you aware that some users were having some issues with the, the web-based interface on the um, the booking clips? Oh, uh, no. Well, are you talking about like the, the new accounting system? Yes. Yeah, um, yeah, I think he sent an email okay. today. Yeah, yeah, we did, and, and um, I, I don't know if you got the notice that we did some system upgrades last night to kind of take care of that problem. Oh, okay, no. <laughs> I trust you. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I, I was just uh, calling to kind of follow up on those system upgrades. Um, ah. How's your workstation running today? So, so far, so good. I haven't had any issues. Okay, good, so good. Okay, and um, like I said, I'm just calling to kind of check up. Uh, do you have oh, a moment just to kind of check to make sure the upgrade worked right? Oh, I see. I, you know, I haven't really noticed anything different. Everything was working fine, so I assume it's all, <laughs> it's all good. Right. Well, let, let's hope so. Um, but um, <laughs> if you have a second, I just wanted to check a couple things on your system. Sure. Just to make sure that, that everything went smoothly. Okay. Would that be all right? Okay, I think that's it. What do you think? Did I, yeah, you think it's successful? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Got her got her pretty good. Um, Monica, when, uh, one thing we notice about this, uh, this new support portal is um, if the user hasn't changed their password in a while, mm -hmm. um, when was the last time you changed your password? Oh, gosh, like a week ago because he just upgraded me and he told me that he made me change my password. Hmm. Okay. Perfect. Someone was there before well, me. Well, you know, the system may be a little hung. Um, I'll tell you what, do you know how to, well, obviously you know how to change your password. Do you yeah, know? I do. Yeah, do you mind if, let's, let's set you a, a temporary password real quick. Okay. So I can get in there. Um, go ahead and go to the screen, you know, the control, delete, and mm -hmm. the password change. Uh huh. And put in your password, and then um, change your password to Monday... Uh, 2011. Okay. 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 Make sure that matches, and then click OK. Okay. Okay. Let me. That <coughs> usually takes a minute to to synchronize. Oh, okay. And now, when you spelled Monday, you you did it all lower. Lowercase. Case, yeah. <laughs> I just, you know, they're kind of picky, right? No, I know. I understand. <laughs> yeah. All lower okay. cases. Oh, hold on, just a second. Let me sure. um, let me see. Log in here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, that came up. Okay. So you you didn't notice a thing, right? No. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Good. Um, I'll take a look at that, Monica, and uh, okay. if I can if I can upgrade the drivers on that on that scanner, and I'll, I'll get with Jason and and uh, catch up with him. Okay. Well. Alrighty. All right. Cool. Okay, thanks a lot, Monica. And, no uh, problem. You have a good afternoon. You too, thanks. All righty. Bye -bye. Okay, bye-bye. That, that particular call, I don't know if you picked up on this, I said something about loading the drivers for the printer and getting in touch with Jason. She had dropped, you know, she had said that she had talked to Jason the week before and he had her reset her password or whatever. Um, and when I had asked her if she was having some problems, she said, I'm not having problems with this, but I'm having some other problems with my printer, right? Um, I've actually had the occasion to actually fix the person's printer before during these calls. Um, in this case, I couldn't because she was missing a driver.
Um, you know, and, and yeah, I didn't want to walk her all the way through going out to HP and downloading the drivers and everything, but, um, but yeah, so you'd run into these kind of things, right? And, and she was thanking me at the end of the call. I was like, yeah, everybody wins, right? Everybody feels good. Yeah, so good call there. All right, so yeah, we'll go with another one here. What is your last name? Um, Abenez. I'm in IT down here in Jacksonville. Okay, I just wanted to make sure who I was talking to. Thank you. I had to look you up. Um, uh, aware of this uh, service portal? Yeah, it's the um, it's the it's at portal.adp.com. Uh huh. I've used it. Okay. Why? Have, have you used it recently? Uh, I don't think so. All right, I think that's about it. Hero or zero? Just yell it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> she puts me on hold. I'm sorry, Being Brian. On hold I have to good. sign in and get out of what I'm doing. Can I call you right back? Um, no, that's okay. I, like I said, we've got a whole list of people to call. Um, if, okay. Yeah. If you don't have time, I can I, I can call somebody else. Uh, now, okay, thank you. Now I know about there's technical ways, you know, to do all the phone looping and all that stuff for the callback, but that's a big hassle. Um, I usually don't get that, so it's really not worth it. But that's one defense, by the way, when you're talking to your users, just ask the person, ask to call the person back, right? And then hang up, look up their phone. If they give you a phone number, ignore it. Look up their real extension or call the help desk and say, hey, I was just talking to so-and-so can you transfer me to them or whatever, right? Nine times out of 10, that's gonna thwart most phone phishing attempts, really. If you'll just, you know, well, first of all, put them on hold while you look up stuff, because that makes them nervous. I know it makes me nervous, because I have no clue what they're doing while I'm on hold, right? All right, I think this is the last quiz here. You guys are spot on. If it plays. Okay, maybe some technical difficulty. Yeah, apparently, yes, it was good. All right, well, cool. So we have a little bit of time here. Yeah, all right, wonderful. <laughs> Coincidentally, we carved out some extra time. Good. For some bloopers, right? Um, and by the way, they, I don't know. I think later they got a, a house on the, in the Hamptons or something. I don't know. All right. Nope, still doing it. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it saying now? Okay, it's a, it's a long message. It says, this password supply does not meet the uh, minimum complexity is. requirements. Please select another password that meets all the following criteria. Is at least seven characters, has not been used in the previous 12, uh, 12 passwords, must not have been changed within the last 30 days. Oh, well, maybe it was less than 30 days that I changed it. Ah, uh, that's what it is. Okay. Their policy was getting in the way of me changing her password. Okay. So, and, and you said your current password was C, what? My, my current one? Yeah. C-A, S-S-I-E, 22. That's what I like. Let me let me try that. Then. I'll just I'll just rub your shoulders, yeah. honey. It's okay. 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 Yeah. Good. So um, <laughs> I, I'm just going to use the remote uh, command portal, and I'll yeah. gather the rest of the information, and uh, and and get that fixed. So so and you know the rest you should of the story, right? To... Yeah. The same old crap. Here's another good one. <laughs> oh, you you said that you you just changed your password on Friday, right? Yes, I did. did okay. You need it? Yeah. I... Okay. It's um, just password. It's capitalized P, and then A S S W O R D zero five. Make it easy. <laughs> oh, she yeah. was serious. Yeah. So it's capitalized yeah. P password and then zero five. Yes, sir. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let me try that. It, uh, um, yeah. Because it because my my interface was using your old password. That's what was the problem was. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was it. Yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs>
That, that always reminds me of that old Seinfeld episode where when Kramer was, people were getting confused between him and the movie theater and, and, he, and, and he was trying to act like an automated attendant and then finally he goes, why don't you just tell me what movie you want to watch? Yeah. Yeah, why don't you just tell me? Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, so that's all I got. Wonderful. Um, obvious shameless plugs up here. Does anybody have any questions? Maybe we got five minutes or? I don't tweet from the Foundson account, but uh, one of the Foundson guys does, and sometimes he either retweets what I do or sometimes I email him and he tweets stuff. Yes, uh, here in the front. You think? Yeah. I, I I'm just more successful with it. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, a guy-girl thing. Um, yeah, I think the Southern voice, yes. And it definitely physical. When I do... <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it at that. You had a question out there? Time of day absolutely makes a difference. And this is from those of you who've done telemarketing. When's the best time to call? I mean, okay, at home it's dinner, but if you were calling professional people, you call in the morning. Morning local time. People are in much better mood. You know, they're ready to talk and give you all kind of information. Yes, right in the back. Oh, day of the week. Um, I don't, I don't, I've not really found a lot of difference. Uh, I mean, I would probably do Tuesday through Thursday just because you'll, you'll be able to contact people. A lot of times, like customers will say, I want you to call 10 people. And I always have to clarify that. You want me to make 10 phone calls or do you want me to actually talk to 10 people? Because if I'm going to talk to 10 people, you need to, or I need to come up with a list of at least 40 people. Because it typically takes four phone calls to get in touch with one person in a normal business environment. Right. Okay, I think we had one other question over here. Oh, I'm sorry, success rate overall? Um, I haven't really done any hard statistics, but, and, and there's a question of, you know, if I make it halfway through the call and I get all this great information, but they don't reset their password, is that considered success or failure? So, but I would say it's got to be, it's got to be in the 90s. Yeah. I mean, yeah, pretty easily, yeah. I'm sorry, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as far as how people react to the Southern thing. Um, uh, interestingly enough, I used to be a little intimidated when I would call somebody in New York, thinking, you know, they're just going to, but actually, Actually, I think it works better when I call people who are in the north versus the south. And in fact, I had one lady who I, I had just gotten back from DerbyCon when I was making this call. And she, she was somewhere Midwest, and, she, and I was pretending to be somebody in California, right? And she picked up on it. And she said, wait a minute. You said you're, you're calling from the California office. You don't sound Californian. I said, really? What do I sound like? She said, well, you sound like you're from the South. I said, that's uncanny. Yeah, I actually am from the South. I just moved out here. She said, she said uh, I'm really good with accents. I said, oh, really? Where do you think I'm from? She said, Kentucky. <laughs> I said, well, I'll be. I'm from Kentucky, specifically Louisville, because I was just in Louisville the last week. And so she starts, she said, well, I'm from Louisville. Really? Oh, really? Have you been to so-and-so, whatever bar it was we, you know, we were at that night, you know? And we start talking about Louisville. And from that point on, she just, she was just totally, she was mine. I mean, yeah. We, we were, yeah, we, we, were, we were buddies. Yeah. I'm sorry. What other? <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, some, I mean, we have consultants who will say, I feel bad because I felt like I just scammed my grandmother, right? Um, and, and yeah, sometimes, but, but the point of the exercise is to make the organization 
you know, more secure. And hopefully, I can't, I can't, I mean, I don't know the hundred calls that I made. I don't know if those people got reprimanded or fired or whatever. I mean, I don't hang around. But I do consult with the client to, to explain to them this is an education process. It's not, this is not something for disciplinary action, all right? Especially if it's like the first time this person has been tested. You know, if they just really are bad, then okay, maybe, or, or you know, whatever. But the purpose of this is educational. I'm sorry, are we out of time? I'm, yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you all. I appreciate the, the interest. Thanks a lot.